The people have spoken. Utah has been officially named the nerdiest state in America. You guys got a problem, and we're here to provide you with your weekly fix. Let your geek flag fly as we guide you through the latest and greatest nerd news. So throw on your best spandex and get ready to warp to light speed as we enter the world of fandom. Home screen. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Fandom. I'm Jessica Lane, your official nerd herder, bringing you all that Utah has to offer in geek news and pop culture. We have a great show for you guys today. We're gonna be heading on down to Utah's own film festival, Film Quest and talking to the director, Jonathan Martin. Later, we're gonna be talking to some creators from some of our favorite films from the festival. And last, we'll be leaving you with a music video from nominee Johnny Bones. There's only two words I can use to describe this music video. Beautifully terrifying. Let's get started this week with some nerd news. This past week, the nerd community and the film community alike were shaken by the sudden death of James Horner, famous composer of films such as Avatar, Troy, A Beautiful Mind, and my personal favorite, Titanic. He had the ability to transform every film that he touched. James Horner, you will be missed. And now, a tribute to you. In my line of work, it's a sort of curious backwater uh, scoring for films. The whole art of film composition for me has become one of gentle manipulation, not only of an audience, but also the director in my case, to accept ideas that he's never heard before. And accept them as his own against an image that he's lived with for quite a long time. And if he's a writer as well as a director, it's something that he's dreamed up from day one. He's written a script, he's gone out and shot the film, and he puts the whole film together. And I look at the film, and he's trusting me to give a reaction as a bystander, as it were. to look at the film and give my version of what I see. But when a bystander who's not been involved in the creation of making the movie looks at it, they have a whole different perspective. As a film composer, you can't look at a film from the director's point of view. You have to look at it completely objectively. It's a very complicated process. Will it be right? Will it affect an audience a certain way? All of that. Um, it's a very interesting sort of um, way to be creative. Alright guys, so now let's head over to Film Quest and talk to Jonathan Martin.
it's Jessica Lane and I'm here with Jonathan oh, Martin. Hi! Hi. Hi. <laughs> he is the director and founder of FilmQuest, am That's I correct? correct? you are correct. I would love for you to explain the festival and kind of the events you've had going on this year. Uh, basically, yeah, we're a festival for the fantastic. Sci-fi, fantasy, horror, the best in around the world. Uh, we have a lot of filmmakers here from around the world, from around the country, who have come here to Utah to participate in this 10-day uh, film lover, film festival event. Some of our events that we've had, we've had obviously the films. Right. We've had some pretty epic parties. We have workshops, we have panels. We have uh, really an opportunity for everybody to, whether you're a fan or a filmmaker, to meet other like-minded individuals, to build new friendships, and also advance your career. Being a filmmaker is what you want. We want to talk about the very coveted trophy, oh. the, Cthulhu. the Cthulhu. What was the inspiration and what made you choose the Cthulhu? It really embodied sci-fi fantasy horror all in one obviously the darker side i just wanted to make an amazing trophy because i knew that would be a big selling point on the festival it gives it prestige it gives you know it's not just like a little certificate that you got it's like wow i won something of value so i got a uh, artist friend of mine incredibly talented work used to work with rick baker no his name is ryan peterson okay. i was thinking of a nick peterson who actually has a couple <laughs> films in this festival i totally like biffed it there sorry ryan he used to work with rick baker actually uh some of his work you've definitely seen in the movies and so we had him design the, uh, the trophy, do this uh, custom uh, design for the film festival, and then we got Society Awards, who makes the Golden Globes to actually produce it and manufacture it. Okay, so people that are watching this that really want to be a part of this film festival, for next year, where do they go to find out more information on how to get their film submitted? Some information that you won't get anywhere else is on the website at uh, filmquestfestival.com. The next best source is where you actually submit the film. It's our preferred, uh, preferred provider. Uh, submission service, it's filmfreeway.com, HD screeners, really easy to use, it's easy for us, it's easy for you. And also following us on social media. So follow us on Facebook, become a Facebook fan, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. Those are really the three main sources that we use. Right, there's always something going on with FilmQuest and I have to say, honestly, um, unlike other film festivals that I've gone to, you do such a great job making your filmmakers feel special and respected. I mean, whether they've made one film or 100 films, they feel incredible being a part of this festival. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the film festival is about you. We don't have a film festival without great filmmakers and great audience members. I mean, that's what it's about at the end. It's not about us, it's about you, and I think that's something that we want everybody to know. All right. Well, thanks so much, Johnny. You heard him. Go to Facebook, like their page to get more information on next year's Film Quest. See you there. Here's a handful of interviews from some of our favorite filmmakers at FilmQuest. Hi, we're here with Johnny Bones. He's a part of FilmQuest. Tell us what your film's name is and a little bit about your film. Yeah, we actually have three projects in the film festival. We have two music videos, uh, Dreamin' from uh, The Please Please Me and Come With Me from the artist Viola Vice in a short film called Point of Interest. We're here with the special effects team from the music video Come With Me. And then what's your name? I'm Sarah Danko. And you were in the video, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's correct. I was in it and then I sculpted and painted her and uh, Eric put all the pieces together. I was a practical effects supervisor, so uh, Johnny the director, he did all the visual effects and digital effects and I handled all of the creature shoot stuff and making sure the puppet came to life. I'm Teresa and um, I uh, co-produced Come With Me with Johnny Bones, but yes, I am also the creature performer. I'm here with Chris Fitchard, the director and writer of Fear of the Darkness. Uh, I started writing it in 2008 um, based on an article I read about these people who had taken this very weird drug and I thought it was a really good concept for a horror film. We cast uh, Penelope Mitchell in the film. She's in Vampire Diaries. So we have another exciting filmmaker with us today. Hi, I'm Etienne. I'm from Montreal and I came here to show my film The Fisher Case. Can you tell us anything about the film? It's a film about a science fiction film, a drama about uh, schizophrenia. I'm here with Eva Dowd. I have a Light Thief, The Light Thief, and uh, it's a world premiere. It's a supernatural movie. And talking about this man who has a supernatural power, he's still this, not a love, 
but the passion of the love, and he keep it in a magic jars. We are with J.D. Seaton, the director of the peripheral. You did something that was truly unique. Instead of doing CG, you actually used stop motion. How did you come up with the idea for that? Well, I always knew that I wanted the creature to be stop motion because uh, the characters see the creatures in the peripheral vision and uh, because there's something inhuman about stop motion. We're going to pull him on the spot. Randy, your lead is here. We had a small group of people, but I think that worked really well. I liked having less people watching me sit in a tear and cry for eight hours. <laughs> it was amazing. Thank you. If you want to see the full interviews, make sure you go to our YouTube page and click on our interviews playlist. Now it's time for Jared Seach with Seach Reviews. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jared Seach coming back with yet another Seach Review. Today we're taking a familiar trip to a galaxy far, far away in Dave Filoni's Rebels. Things are getting worse just as they did back when I was your age. But back then, there were 10,000 Jedi Knights protecting the galaxy. Now, there's just you and me. Now what Rebels seems to do so well is take us back to the same mood and atmosphere that the original three films created. Now if you haven't checked out season one of Rebels, I highly recommend the show. But in this review, we're focusing on Siege of Lethal, a special that Dave Filoni graced us with to get us through the dry season until season two begins. And I gotta tell you, it's pretty dang epic. I'm on my mark. This episode features some really awesome footage of Darth Vader himself and some of the things that we weren't able to see in the original films, such as Vader's powers and his, his, his influence and truly how menacing he can be are all brought to light in this episode. We will squeeze Lothal until someone reveals the whereabouts of these traitors. And that is just the beginning. I cannot wait to see what happens in season two. Now, since this is a spoiler free review, I can't say too much, but I can recommend for you to check out the show right away. The series may come in a kid friendly wrapper, but it delivers a truly awesome cinematic experience, even for adults. I'll leave you guys with my favorite scene from the episode. Darth Vader is in pursuit of our heroes, and I think an ATST falls on top of them. They look back thinking that, well, the Sith Lord is inevitably dead and his hand raises up from the ashes, the debris floating over top of him. And Ezra says, if that doesn't kill him, what will? It truly displayed how awesome Darth Vader is. And let's be honest, we're all excited to see the Sith Lord back again in action. Season two of Rebels starts back up 2015. Check it out till then. Make sure you're caught up on season one. I'm Jared Seach with Fandom. I'm out. Your master has deceived you into believing you can become a Jedi. Yeah, I can see on your face. How are you feeling right now? I feel amazing. I am like super excited. I'm, I just feel super lucky and I, I just couldn't be happier to be recognized at this particular film festival. Film Quest means a lot and you know just uh, being amongst these filmmakers in the genre of film category, it's just amazing. I'm really excited. It's, it's nice to be nominated and when I saw the video up there my heart just like burst open and, uh, and I was feeling pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, I won a Best uh, Director in a short film. But, uh, so I'm very happy and this is the prize <laughs> and um, I'm so proud. It's really honored. <laughs> who, who will not be happy when he is winner? You know what we say here at Fandom, books are awesome. So we're going to head over to Dan to find out our book of the week. This is Daniel with Fandom, here to talk about books, and the book we're talking about today is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. It is a fantastic book. Now, kind of let me give you the, the rundown. This is a book based on people becoming gods randomly. You get supernatural powers to be able to create and do anything you want, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, 
something happens that when you get selected, you are now an undead zombie and it's bad things happen. That's where the book starts. And then it just continues and becomes more and more epic from there. This is a great, fantastic book. You're gonna love it. Lots of amazing action, person of interest story going on. And it's fantastic by Brandon Sanderson. It's one of the first books he wrote. Check it out. It's Elantris. So books are awesome. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for stopping by and hanging out with us today at Fandom. Stick around to check out Vila Vice's music video, Come With Me, directed by Film Quest winner Johnny Bones. Oh, 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 oh,